Hello and welcome everybody to another exciting edge of your seat installment of Club Moffat Talks. I am Chris. I'm Joe. And I'm state your name here. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to read that part. <laughs> We're I'm joined Ryan. today by a very, very special guest. We've got uh, Tasia here today. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name obviously is Tasia. Zach, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am today. I'm a guest, but I'm also the marketing and outreach coordinator at Moffat Library, and I am an international student. Uh, and I come from the island, uh, the Caribbean island of Dominica. Awesome. And uh, today, I think you're you're going to want to talk a little bit about that that experience of uh, being a um, uh, illegal uh, alien. <laughs> <laughs> you're you you're, you're currently legal, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank God. I'm not out of status. Uh, but yeah, I really just wanted to talk about. Um, you know, just being an international student, uh, what that experience has been like. And uh, I felt, you know, I pitched this like really last minute just because, you know, even when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about, I was like, oh, people are going to expect me to talk about this. You know, it's just, you know, stereotypical thing. Uh, but I think it's really important uh, to look at this also because I work in a library setting and uh, I've walked around the building so many times and seen and talked, just had conversations with so many international students that I, I felt that, you know, it would it would be a great topic to discuss uh, because in essence, libraries are, you know, recognized as trusted spaces um, for just a like so many people um, that it's not just Americans or, um, you know, it's just, it's, you have people from China, you have students from India, you have students from the Caribbean, you have students from Africa who use our services. And so, you know, we have such a vital role to play in their support. So I was just like, okay, let's just do this. So I guess today we're just gonna dive in and look up more into my life, my job here and, also, I'd like to hear from you guys about any experiences that you have had with international students. So, And we do have a pretty sizable amount of international students here. So, uh, yeah, to be able to actually hear more about that and, and get your experience on it, I think, is very valuable indeed. Absolutely. Yeah, we uh, do have, um, I think we have over 500 international students here currently. Um, we just had graduation last week, and I know we had at least 77 international students graduating, and 42 of those were from my country. So <laughs> that's awesome. It, it it was it was so uh, yeah we do have a, a really wide pool here um, at MSU. So before we jump into all of that, we got a little bit of housekeeping. To maintain just because this is um <clears throat> this has become uh something that we've been uh entrapped by is our uh, our schedule of what are we doing right now uh and we'll try to get through these uh relatively quickly so um do we have anything that's happening on campus or just like in the community that we want to talk about real quick um well, as far as like stuff that's happening now, it is weird because we did just have a uh, commencement. We just had graduation and we've got a couple of weeks out before we start summer school, uh, what we call here intercession, which just mm -hmm. means we're between stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, what, 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 what else were you thinking about? Well, I'll mention the fact that this is be coming out probably a little bit later, but I will mention we are about to enter our summer hours, and our summer hours are different than our normal hours throughout the year. We do close at 10 o'clock at night, and on Saturday we open at noon. So just be aware of the fact that if you're coming to the library to study here over the uh, over the summer, be aware first off that we have a lot of intercession hours, so make sure you know what those are. 
uh, make sure because if we're, if classes are not in session, we are open only um, from eight to five. And then once classes begin, uh, we do have reduced hours for the summer. OK, yeah, we are we are open more than just about any other institution here on campus, but we do also like to go home every now and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, we, we appreciate that our families pretend that they like to see us. <clears throat> I, yeah, I feel like mine. They, there's a lot of heavy lifting on that uh, in that aspect. Um, are we reading or, or watching anything interesting or playing any video games or anything right now? Um, well, let's see. I, I, I finished watching the Moon Knight TV series. Uh, I'm not playing anything right now. I'm currently reading uh, the second book in the Magicians trilogy. It's the the book series that the TV series was based on. Mm. Um, and I'm I'm appreciating the similarities and differences between you know the book and the television translation. Of course. Uh, how about you guys? Oh, and, and Ryan just gave me a graphic novel of Daredevil, which I will be reading probably tonight until I finish it. So uh -huh. I can bring it back to him tomorrow. Even though he told me, hang on to this as long as you want. I'm going <laughs> to go home and devour it. Oh, my gosh. Um, I have just been binging Netflix. Well, whenever I get a chance. Um, I don't know how many things I've watched and I, yeah, I sometimes go from whatever time of night to like hours in the morning. So uh, what am I reading right now? Gosh, what have I read in the last week? Um, it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago and one of my friends got me um, Trevor Noah's Born a Crime, mm -hmm. which I think came out in 2016 that I've been wanting to read for such a long time. So yeah, I'm I just started reading that, so um, that's pretty interesting. How do you like it? So far, so good. I feel like he has so much wit and just like, just he's a great storyteller and uh, it really just details his, his life as a young mischievous boy and it's something that i think a lot of um a lot of us if we look back you know something that we can relate to like doing things um when our parents backs were turned and almost setting the house on fire and stuff like that <laughs> so um it's it's fun to read about but it's also really just um there's so much awareness happening because he you know was born in, in the time of the apartheid uh, in South Africa. I know I say things a bit different, so I expect you guys to correct me <laughs> when I say things. Ah, never. So uh, it's pretty just interesting to, I guess, to read about, you know, his life and his upbringing in South Africa and his transition to the U.S. and stuff like that, which kind of just brings a lot of things home for me. So. Yeah. The Born a Crime from Trevor Noah, then. Yes. High recommendations. Of course, and he's the he's the host of the Daily Show, I believe. So there's some good things on there. So if you're someone who's into that kind of stuff, then yeah, grab the book, tune in. It's it's really it's really good. All right, Ryan, you got anything? No. Okay. <laughs> um. So I'm doing my normal stuff. I'm I'm reading some manga. I, I'm just now getting into Fist of the North Star because I'm. Only like old things now, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm also playing Final Fantasy XIV when I get the chance. Uh, it's really, really hard to play an MMO with a baby. Um, and I was watching a television program called Moon Knight. Uh -huh. um, people who know me know that might be a shock because I genuine, or generally don't really care much for the Marvel stuff. Um, I, I had kept up with them until the first Avengers movie, and I was like, you know what? I, I feel satisfied. I feel like I've gotten a good story arc out of all this. But um, so I, I watched Moon Knight uh, a couple of episodes, and then um, the other kind of factor in what I'm about to say is that uh, I mentioned before I watched um, 43 years of of the Mobile Suit Gundam franchise in about six months. So I don't have a whole lot of um, um, big things punching each other uh, going on right now 
uh, and I didn't realize how much I would miss having that going on in the background. So um, last night I watched a film called The Incredible Hulk uh -huh. because I'd watched Iron Man about a year <laughs> earlier. Uh, I'd seen that one already, but I was like, yeah, I might as well watch it again. So um, I fell asleep during The Incredible Hulk last night because that movie is is incredibly, incredibly dull and derivative. Uh -huh. It is. Um, it is. As soon as the last fight started, um, I was, I, I had my daughter on my lap, and uh, she's, she's teething and kind of going through like sleep regression and stuff. And and yesterday she had gotten her shots for uh, her four month appointment, so she was kind of upset. And, uh, I laid her on my lap, and and she started to take a nap, and I was like, oh, thank God, I can't move from here though. Um, so last big dumb fight and Incredible Hulk starts and I'm just like out as soon as as fists start flying. And I woke up when the credits rolled and I feel like I didn't miss a thing. Uh, so now I'm watching Iron Man 2 and I guess I'm in. I, I guess I'm fully in on it. Yeah. And the I will say this. Um, the movies do get better and better and better and better. But you have to, you know. They, um, they, it's, it's uh, a long to, slog to get to that point. Yeah, to 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 use your word just now, they better. <laughs> uh, actually, I like Iron Man two a whole lot. I don't know why people hated this one. Oh my gosh, there's a list. You want it chronologically, alphabetically? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, we'll we'll nah. have to do that outside the podcast. It's too <laughs> yeah, long. Yeah, you, you might have to do that because I'm sure we we'd be in for a, a very <laughs> long time. But I actually am enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, you were going to say something, Tasia? I was asking if anyone's going to see uh, Doctor Strange. That's actually the That's other reason why I decided I'm going to uh, get in on this. Um, because Doctor Strange is directed by Sam Raimi, who I uh, adore. Adore, yeah. And I know that uh, this is... Um, the the subtitle for this film is uh, Doctor Strange uh, colon Marvel 28. Uh and I've got a really bad problem where I can't just start a series in the middle of it. I have to go from moment one until it's over. Mm. So um, I right. guess I've got a few other things to watch right. first. And then I'm going to do Moon Knight uh, over again. I guess I'm going to start from the beginning when I get to it. So, um, yeah, uh, you people have, have trapped me uh, <laughs> with, with promises of Sam Raimi. Welcome to the multiverse. Uh, yeah, I guess that's. I guess I mean. I guess I'm in. I'm all in. Yeah. Uh, and that's it for me. Okay. Awesome. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Tasia. Um, that's all. That that's usually how this goes. Is we just kind of give a recap of what <laughs> we're doing, and then uh, it's on to the main topics. So without further ado. Well, I guess, yeah, thank you guys so much uh, again for having me on. I'm just going to be ranting mostly. <laughs> and I really, again, just wanted to talk about this because it's it's really the only experience I've had here. Um, and I kept thinking, OK, what are the things I'm passionate about? What are the things I'm passionate about? And in some way, they kept coming back uh, to to all of this and um so like I was mentioning to Joe, you know, the aim of this is is really not to even like focus on like our differences so much, but to zone in on the ways that we are all pretty similar. And when I thought about this topic, one of the things that I first remember was my first day here, um, which was not was not a very good day. Uh, for international students, you know, the transition can be can be really difficult um, and you experience a sort of like um, culture shock. Um, and there's just there's just a number of things that I think a lot of people don't um, realize um, that we go through even in those like first couple of days. So when I got here, they were like, you know, someone told me it was going to be cold. But, um, you know, a lot of us, we understand i guess american culture through films right through movies through books and stuff and so you already you have this preconceived idea of what you think america is going to be when we you know when we saw like midwest movies so you know it was always like cowboys and like heat 
if that makes sense. Um, and, you know, we tumblers and stuff. And so when I decided I was coming to Texas, I was like, OK, I think Texas is going to be great. Number one, because it's warm and I don't like anywhere that's cold. Right. So I thought it was going to be like 100 degrees. And to us, that's in the Caribbean, you know, that's like normal, like everyday weather. And so I hopped on the plane with like a regular T-shirt in January 2018. <laughs> um, and I got here and I was freezing my socks off because in my mind, I was coming to Texas. I wasn't expecting it, you know, to be cold. Um, I didn't, I thought air, the airport was going to be like the normal little building <laughs> that we had back at home. Um, and so everything was just different. Everything was so much bigger. There were just so many people and stuff. And um, the weather was one thing. Um, the currency is like another thing. Cause this woman told me, well, you know, this, this drink is like, it's, 325 and I'm like oh just three 325 um and in my brain I had like not done the math because conversion for us is like I think a U.S. dollar back home is 2.69 and so when you do the reverse I was like oh wow so oh it's actually almost eight dollars for you know a soda so they're just there's just so many things that I experienced on that day. The first day I got here too, um, someone literally looked me in the face and was just like, you know, why are you here? Like, why are you in our country? Um, and, you know, that being a first experience is something that kind of just shocks you and you realize, oh, well, this is reality now. This is not just a TV show anymore. Um, and so all the things I had um thought about all the things I had expected, uh, you know, just were kind of the opposite and just became very real. Um, but needless to say, um, I have had a wonderful uh, experience here at MSU. Um, not all of it has been has been wonderful, but I really want to focus on the good parts uh, and to kind of just talk about the library a little bit and my job here and how I try to support everyone here, not just international students, but every student that walks in through this door. So yeah, I guess that's just kind of an introduction into all of this. Um, and I'm going to just segue into the fact that, OK, so right now I am the marketing and outreach coordinator at the library. I did my my undergrad, my bachelor's of, of arts. Um, so I went to the Fane College, the Fane Fine Arts, Fine Arts College. Um, so I got my BA here. Um, I want to continue and probably get my master's here as well. Um, and so I'm in this transitionary period where I'm I'm working for a year or so. And then I go back to school because you have all these things to consider um, as an international student to remain in status. So you can either be in an education program or you can work, but you can't do both at the same time. Um, and so once you're done with your degree, you either have to get a work permit and if that, you know, if you don't get that permit, then you have to either get back into another program or go home. So there's just a lot, a lot of things happening right now um, that I kind of wanted to touch base on because I know a lot of international students are experiencing uh, these things. So I guess my first, I would probably even ask you guys a question and, and say, you know, since you've been at the library um i know ryan you're probably well ryan is ryan you've been here for you know the longest out of all of us what i has, was born in the library yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what has your you know um what has been your what has your interaction i guess with international students been like if um well one of the things that um well let me just say that Things have vastly changed from when I first came here. When I first came here, the um, 
the policy was uh, for the uh, circulation manager not to hire foreign students, actually, is what the policy was, which is just wrong. And now, the because um, a lot of foreign students can only work on campus, uh, the library makes a special effort to try to reach out and hire um, foreign students uh, to work here in the library because we know they don't have opportunities outside of the campus to actually have a job or to make money. So it, it, that's one of the major changes I think I've seen over the years is that complete reversal of just kind of well we don't want to deal with 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 the trouble to well this is a this is a group of people that need our help that need and and this may be the only option they have a lot of times so let's try to um, let's try to accommodate them uh, I think that's the biggest change I've seen as far as um, student work um, uh, foreign students uh, here at the library yeah that's that's pretty that's that's interesting um that you mentioned <laughs> and that's one of the things I think a lot of us have to deal with is the fact that we cannot like you said work off campus and you know so even when I when when I was thinking about okay what do I do with my with my life now I knew from like having friends and stuff you know that the library did accommodate uh, international students um, and I genuinely wanted to apply for this job because I felt like, you know, um, I, I love the environment that you guys have created here uh, over the years and uh, the support that you give to international students. And I just really wanted to be able to contribute to that uh, in, in, in a big way. So um, th thank you guys for taking on people like me. <laughs> You know. Well, I was, you know, I was one of the people that helped hire you. Um, you were a standout because we knew that we wanted, this is something we've, we've thought about for a long time, that we knew that we were failing uh, to reach out to certain communities within, within the campus, uh, including the foreign students. And so we really wanted to get somebody um, into the position that would reach out to the students a lot more. And being able to get someone who not only was a student here, but was a member of student organizations and had good ties, still had good ties with the student community was something we really, um, we really were really looking for. And we were very happy when we were able to hire you. Awesome, well, thank you. Joe, are you gonna say something? <laughs> well, I, I have to because, well, all right, uh, this 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 is going to be weird for people that don't know us, but I'm just going to do this, you know, on 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 international television here. Um, I love Gracia. I think she's amazing. She's done an amazing job here, um, and I can't imagine what the library will be like without her, uh, because I do feel like that she has made us more of a presence on campus that she's brought more attention to the library, that she's brightened up the place with the displays and, uh, you know, her general sunny disposition. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was able to sit in when she did her presentation, uh, when she was in the hiring process. And I was like, we have to hire this girl. She's perfect for this job. And she has been. Oh, I cry like do you, do you <laughs> see this is why we have the cameras off so that if, you, if, you, if, if a tear happens to roll down your cheek you'll be the only one that knows no one will know no one can know I cannot ruin my reputation it's, it's, it's your it's your shame to to maintain <laughs> not ours no I I kind of wanted I'm, I'm not good with sappy um this um in fact for um my uh the card that i gave to my wife for her first mother's day i think i wrote down two sentences and i was like perfect that's this is longer than i thought i was gonna write it than, than i was gonna write for her but yeah um we've we've done like a whole 180 on our presence here on campus i feel like and that's a hundred percent because of tasia's presence here it's um yeah you've you've done so much more with like all the public stuff like i, I remember in the last few years something like uh band books week would have just been like a little display on the second floor and the, the little glass uh box that we have and here it was like a whole thing with like the 
the displays out on the front or like um, International Women's Month. You had that the, was what impressed me was International Women's Month. The amount of work <laughs> that you put into that was was jaw dropping. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't know how we're gonna like. <laughs> I, I don't know what we're gonna do. Into my book dress. Was it the, the book dress that got you? Guys? The, the, yeah, the book dress. Was, I, I think I turned the corner once. Uh, uh, it was it was either late night when I was working or like on the weekend or something, and I saw it out of the corner of my eye when I turned that corner, and I jumped a little bit because it was. Oh, you're it, the so... one who kicked her over. Someone kicked her over. How dare they? <laughs> oh my! I think it was no, what someone it... scared someone, and they had the same reaction. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was interesting because you'd be like walking through the stacks and all of a sudden there would be this blurb about this person and I'd have to sit there and I'd have to read it. And it was just amazing information that was just randomly like little little truth bombs or little information bombs all hidden throughout the library. It was it was just amazing. It well, was amazing. Two, yeah, those two have been really fascinating. And then yeah. the the um, can you tell us a little bit about the display you have here with the um, the glass on the stairs? Oh, yes. Uh, let's talk about. So I have been, you know, thinking about ways to really engage students. And I think one of the areas that we felt short is that we didn't have a lot of like interactive stuff. And so that's why every time I do a display or something, I want people to like I want a lot of self -lear like learning to happen. I want people to, to just randomly see things and be like, oh, my God, and to touch things, to do all that. And so, I don't know, I was like, what are what is a way that, you know, we can build community in the library? And we also recently had Library Week and our, you know, the theme for a library, uh, National Library Week was connect with your library. And I'm like, okay, how can we get people to connect with us? So I wanted to do it since then. But I felt like finals week was the best time to do it. You know, people are stressed. And you just want to do something for students, you know, that they can participate in. And it's not like an essay they have to write. It's not like, you know, anything stressful. And I, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun um, as, you know, recently being a, a, well, a recent graduate. I was like, what is something that I would want to do in the library that would be fun and cool and that other students, you know, might also think is is fun and cool. And so... I just went to Amazon. Thank God for Amazon. They have everything. Um, and I got these liquid chalk markers. And I was like, we have so much glass. We have <laughs> so much glass. I've never seen, because I remember what the library looked like during the renovation. And I've seen pictures of what it looked like before. And I was just, oh my God, there's so much wood. Mm -hmm. But we have all these extended windows and stuff right now. And I was like, okay. Why don't we, you know, just use the glass? And so I got these markers and uh, I just thought of like one thing. What are your plans for after finals? And I was like, yes, everyone is like so stressed out and they just want an opportunity to say something. Students are always looking for ways to, to just, you know, say something, express themselves, say how they feel. And it was so cool. I didn't expect so many people to pick up the markers and just let like start writing on there and doodling and it it was i think uh the reception was really good so we just asked them what are you doing after finals and people wrote i mean crazy stuff stuff i probably can't repeat <laughs> yeah <laughs> on the podcast but some of them were really cool like i you got to learn you know students were going on mission trips um like places that they were planning to like vacation some people had quotes um you know a lot of people are trying to either become like entrepreneurs or you know get that bag according to one of them it's like they're trying to make money some people had plans for graduation and, and joining a master's program um so a lot of people just you know i think it's good i think it was cathartic in that way and and other people got to read other people's comments and like respond to stuff. And they kept coming back to see who had like responded to like what they had written or um, people started drawing. And it was it, I think I think it was successful. I, I think it was fun. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any room left for them to, <laughs> to for anyone else to give their opinions, honestly. 
I don't think, um, but I I thought it was, I think it's the best location for something like that because it kind of catches your eye when you're entering or, you know, or leaving. And also it's pretty easy to clean. So it's, you know, it's just, it's water, it's a water-based uh, marker. So you just kind of wipes off and, you know, that makes it easy to to kind of maintain. And that also makes sense. So. And just having a having a marker out there is just like it's like an invitation. Like, OK, it's here, an invitation. Here, here. of course. Yeah. Just write something. Um, And, you know, they've been pretty respectful for the most part in terms of, you know, they're not just writing like all these crazy things. But um, <laughs> it was very entertaining, to say the least, uh, some of the things that they wrote on there. And I think like that's what a library space should be, you know, um, yes, you come here to study, but sometimes you just kind of need like a break you just I like to put like sweets out at the front you know sometimes they just need like a little extra sugar or some things so, um, we you know I know also TASP you know has done stuff like that in terms of like putting out donuts and stuff and so we try to do things where they get to eat a lot as well people love food so I try to do a lot of things um, where students can grab and go stuff because you know they're on the go they're studying they're coming here in between classes they're coming here in between work we are we are their second home and you know you want people to feel like this space is ours so it's really just about building community i think absolutely that's that's something that i was really hoping to see like uh, i i had a, a dream of doing something like that here when when i first started and um uh, i'm I'm too stretched out between other things, and and you've taken that, like, well, just I'll also here. point out to you uh, when you first started working here, Chris, we were going to do something very much like what Tossie did here, but we were uh, the previous administration kind of frowned upon it. So yeah, th there's that too. But yeah, it's Tossie has taken that up like like and and become a real torchbearer for it, and and just just. She's done this better than I think anyone here could have could have even possibly approached uh, doing these kind of like fun little programs and and uh, engagement and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I try. I think to um, I won't take all the credit because I will say that you know working with you guys has just been I mean so much fun and you know being under uh, Courtney's you know leadership I think you guys have just you have created a space where you know I feel like I have the the creative freedom you know to do all these things and to explore all these things and there's never a time I've come up with something crazy that anybody has said no to or like absolutely shut down and you've always given like great feedback because I know I talk to all of you and ask you, you know, questions like what do you think about this or how, how can we do this? So I think um, for the most part, I probably have the ideas, but the, you know, or I'm probably good at the execution part, but I feel like the ideas, you know, has been uh, a team effort. So thank you guys for always like jumping on board with anything crazy that I've decided to do. Um, and Ryan is the one at the front. He's never complained about my <laughs> my book, my book, ladies, uh, uh, my paper dolls and all the things that I put up at the front. Um, Joe has also been a great sounding board for a lot of my um, ideas. And you've also given me some great ideas. And, you know, Chris, you've also been very, you know, just welcoming and and always e eager to help. So thank you guys for helping me to, you know, to do my job. But yeah. I think this has become like a, a thank you party instead of like. <laughs> uh, well, I was just about to say no thank you, but now that you said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I think for, I think, you know, if we're just to stare back to like the topic, I think it's, it's important to have these things that also contribute to the diversity of the university. Um, and even with like the glass window, it was good to, you know, see students talking about like their travels and going back home and they would like draw their flags and stuff like that. Or just talk about like their summers on the beach and stuff. And we know Texas ain't got no beaches, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not Texas. Um, but, you know, I think it's it's uh, my time here has been fun in trying to bring new ways of, you know, to just foster this sort of like cultural diversity 
um, within the library. That's already there. It it is already there. It probably just needed someone, you know, to kind of just like pull it out. So yeah, it's it's been it's been interesting. We also have a lot of international students who work here, um, especially you know in this at circulation. Um, and so I try to talk to them every day, try to find out more about their experiences. How can we make the library, you know, more open for people like them? I've also talked to not just like my Caribbean fellows, but just like I've talked to a lot of Indian students. Um, I've talked to a lot of um, students from Europe. I've talked to a couple of students from Australia. I meet a lot of African students. And so I think a big part of this job is just asking them, you know, what would you like to see in a library and how does it help you? A lot of times these students we don't know are going through a lot of things outside of, you know, academics. They're dealing with, again, like I mentioned, culture shock. They're dealing with um, cultural isolation and being homesick. Um, they're, again, in between jobs, some of them. Um, some of them work for us and they work for two or three different campus um, departments on campus. You know, a lot of people here also have like financial struggles. I've met people here and I've been like, hey, let's just, you know, go to Starbucks. Would you like a coffee? It's those simple things that we do for them that I think, you know, really goes a long, a long way. It really does. And we are you know also vital in bridging those gaps and helping people to connect i mean we i mean not just with books but with everything the access that they have at the library you know um so i think this is the best place you know to talk about international students and to do more for international students oh, absolutely <clears throat> and to answer your question um that you that you put forth earlier because i've been thinking about this as well um the the library i came from didn't really have that many um student workers um it, rather than, than those positions being filled by students like the circulation and stuff it was mostly uh, just part-time workers uh, and most of the uh student workers were in the back doing cataloging stuff so uh to go from that environment to this one where we have a, a large amount of, of international students who are front facing, they're there at the um, they're at the circulation desk, they're behind the scenes with with cataloging and just doing a whole bunch of, of different things for our institution and our organization. Uh, it 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 allows me to kind of talk and interact and and uh, kind of learn more about where they came from and and what their experience is like uh, as well just being able to to work with them and um uh what my um my first assistant here um she, she just she did such incredible work getting us uh, ready for just the big uh the like the reopening that we had for um uh after covid and, and after our um, uh renovation yeah. and stuff and it 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 really really hurt my heart that she had to uh return home after getting her degree without actually being able to see our new opening and see how she contributed to the place because like without her there was no way i think that i would have ever gotten uh my part of of the job done um maybe i could have done it in time but not with with the the depth and just the um the quality that that ended up being there so yeah. that, that i don't know that's my that's my take on it <laughs> well i guess from her um i'll say it on behalf of her thank you um you know i think it's uh, a lot of people ask me you know if you know this is going to be the outcome then you know why do you come here why do you do it uh, i think that's the question i've gotten most and i think just to go back to what i was saying earlier it's really about our similarities and differences and if you think about it everyone wants to build you know a life for themselves everyone wants to um have these opportunities and to explore and to grow and it's not that we 
it's not that we can't do it at home. It's just that, I mean, we, we talk about the American dream all the time. And it's just that America just has so many opportunities um, that we probably don't have as much of back home. Some of us want to also just, you know, be out of that environment and in, 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 in that space. And I think when you start to travel and you study in different places, I mean, gosh, the growth that happens. Um, a lot of people who stay in one place are very closed minded and cannot see the world, you know, beyond what is like in front of them. And I think coming here has really just opened up my mind to uh, or my eyes to the realities that I could I could achieve here and just, you know, change my thought process. It changed the way I looked at life. It changed the way I looked at other people. Um, and again, even especially during COVID, that's one of the things we realized is that we are all so similar. We are all going through this thing. And for me, uh, COVID was more about like the human impact. I'm just like, a lot of people are talking about the virus, the virus, the virus. But I think COVID really humbled a lot of us um, and it really just forced us to interact with each other, you know, whether it was like virtually or so because we couldn't physically be together, but to understand each other and to empathize and to consider other people and all of that. And so, I mean, you mentioned COVID and the renovation and stuff, so I'm just plugging that in there. But, you know, um, yeah, we come and we we try to just make the best of this opportunity that we're given it's unfortunate that we you know it doesn't work out sometimes because some it's worked for some people they've gotten to stay um and then for others you know it 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 doesn't so um i'm happy that you know the library has had this experience and you know whoever is coming after can just continue to to maintain that is is the hope Well, now I'm sad. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't want this to be like a sad podcast. You know, I wanted us to really, um, I want us to have fun with this one. I'm sorry I'm bringing like, I'm drawing on the emotion. But Ryan, I really, I mean, if you know Ryan, you know, he's not like, <laughs> he's, I don't think you're an emotional guy. And you're, but I think you're just like a big teddy bear and you're pretending to be just a bear sometimes. <laughs> so yeah it's 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 been it's been cool um uh just i was doing some research and i actually found out that so i think the last in in terms of statistics i think i don't think there is a, a report for 2020 2021 yet but 2029 2019 2020 we had over i think in the u.s over a um, one million 75,496 international students and then I was looking at okay well what is also like you know how do we con contribute to the places that we are in the contribution to the U.S. economy is over 28.4 billion dollars and I think a lot of people you know have I like I said earlier I've had experiences where people have said you know go home like you don't belong here or I've been standing in line my first, my second day here, I think, you know, I'm not familiar with the currency. Um, and so she said, probably said like 75 cents. And I'm like, what? I'm like pulling out all the, like every, all the pennies and stuff I have in my hand. And I'm just like, okay, what is 75 cents? And I'm asking her, okay, is this like a 10 cent or is this like, is this 25? And I'm just trying to read everything. I'm like, I was like, I just gave her like a dollar bill uh, when I eventually found one because I couldn't, you know, make heads or tails of of this currency. And uh, it took me a little while. And I, you know, I kept apologizing for, you know, and then I was just like, OK, well, you have to figure this out because you're going to be doing this for like the next three years. Um, and she wasn't very. Um, accommodating she was just like okay well you need to hurry it up because i need to serve these other customers and it's just like please just have some patience with me and uh you know me and my friends were trying to just like figure it out and when we were leaving she turns to the woman behind us and she said you know i'm sorry i'm sorry for them i'm i'm, I'm sorry like uh you know how they are 
that's oh, that's Lord. that's the language that she used. And I remember just like snapping and I turned so quick to give her this like with a swiftness to give her a response. And then my friends were just like, nope, this is new territory. We can't do this here. <laughs> you can't act out. You can't afford to go to jail. You can't afford to be kicked out of school. Um, and so we have all these things that we think about if we even want to like just like gather someone real quick. I wanted to just put her in her place. And I was just like, oh, I can't even do this. Urgh. And it's frustrating. And so, and so it's just these, you know, these little things where people tell you go back home and they don't realize, you know, how much of a contribution we actually do make when we get her hair or the things that we try to do. I mean, you have... I mean, even just in MSU alone, you have students from Spain, students from Bangladesh, Venezuela, Brazil, um, Bahamas, China, uh, India, Nigeria, you name it. There are so many people just, you know, really trying to do good things. They're in engineering. They're in health professions. Um, they're in business administration. Um, you know, and we don't all take this and go back home with it. We try to see what we can use, what we've learned here and, and to build something here that I think adds to, you know, to, to everything that America is. So yeah, it's, it's good and it's bad, but for the most part, it can be a wonderful thing. Well, I'm, I'm glad that your, that your takeaway isn't all bad because, uh, um, <clears throat> It, it seems like <laughs> things could very easily go in that direction. Of course. Especially especially with uh, one of your first experiences being something like that. That's that's horribly frustrating. Yeah, and it's 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 traumatizing because then you think, okay, well, is everyone that way? You know, I think the that's the the bad part about racism is that, you know, I, I've heard this saying that you may never remember, you know, what a person says, but you always remember how they make you feel. And so the next time you have an interaction with, you know, someone else, you're just like, oh, well, is this going to be my interaction? And you can imagine coming into a place, even in like the library, where when I was applying for this job, I didn't know how many other black people or international people were um, applying for this job. And I was just like, OK get it together. And you know, there's a fear and, and sort of anxiety that you feel because you're just like, and no offense, but the first thing is, okay, it's a lot of white people. Are they racist? Are they gonna like me? Um, you know, how are they gonna respond to me? Are, are they gonna tell me, oh, I can't understand your accent? Um, you know, things like that. And it, it seems like small things, but to us, it's, you know, it, it's, a re it's, it's a really big thing. Can I work with these people? Um, and so I'm very happy that you guys have given me the welcome that you did because I, I mean, I want to stay. <laughs> I'm trying to stay. And so it's like um, if if I had a different experience, I'd be like, OK, mom, I'm ready to come home. Like, this is not it. I can't do this. And so I think it also depends, you know, on where you are and if the people around you are open minded, you know, Um and I think people are just people for the most part uh, outside of skin. You know, I just there is it takes nothing from you to be kind to someone. It takes nothing from you to have respect for someone or to work with someone. And so, um, again, I you credit me a lot, but I also credit all of you. So. Was Ryan going to say something? <laughs> no. Oh, OK. So a few words, it's, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's tough to, to respond to all that because I mean, it's, you're, you're right. And we don't often hear that perspective nearly enough as we, as we might want to. Yeah. I was a little hesitant. I was like, okay, how are we going to approach this podcast? Because it's not something that, you know, unless you're an international student, you can relate to. Um, and I was—I remember talking to to uh, we had the therapy dogs last week, so the obedience training club normally bring their dogs uh, at the end of finals, and so I contacted them and asked them, you know, if they could come, and it was really fun. We had a great time, and in sitting there talking to one of the dog trainers, Holly, 
uh, you know, we just started talking about people in general and how these dogs bring comfort to people because you saw how like people from all walks of life coming just to like have this moment and it's so therapeutic and you know different students and they come and they all play with the dogs and it was really heart warm, um, warming to see and then she mentioned you know that the job like she does and how much it opens her up to different cultures and different people and we were talking about an experience we somehow went on to the i think it was the 1979 i hope i'm getting the year correct when you guys had the tornado and she was just telling me about her experience and how she was hiding you know uh, i think it was in a closet or something and I remember those same feelings when I experienced a Category 5 hurricane uh, back in my home country. And so then you realize that, oh, my gosh, we like we connected. Our stories were so similar. There was, you know, so much that we could talk about. And you realize that, oh, it's this. She's just a normal person, just like me. And I remember the first time I met her, uh, she and, and someone else had asked me, um, they asked me something and they didn't know I was from the Caribbean until I said they were like, wow, like you don't even have an accent. <laughs> and I'm like, what's that supposed to be? But I laughed because I, you know, and she said, yeah, I, I would not tell. I would. I thought that you were American. And for me, I was just like, wow, OK, like I've never had someone tell me that. And so it's just like, again, we're we're all just humans. You know, and that it was such a great interaction. And then it brought me back to something, Joe, you know, just so you can chime in here and something that Joe and I were ta uh, talking about uh, and, and Alexis some time back. And it was about also being black in America and how our, you know, being uh, Afro-Caribbean and then dealing with Af um, African Americans and how different that is because people would assume that because, you know, we're all black, we all think the same or reason the same or we get along so well. And even that was a bit of a shock to me when I got here. It's that the Caribbean community and the African American community hardly interfered or interacted with each other. And it was it was shocking um, at first, and it's just like oh, wow. So, you know, and so it's it's not even just a thing about you know race or like white people because there you have other black people who we couldn't identify with because our experiences with being black were so different, which is so different. So uh, I'll just I'll just throw something in there. It's. It's just a very human thing, I think. Um, I remember last week during the the uh, TRLC uh, blowout at the end, um, one of the new people in community was saying, well, well uh, was talking about, well, how, what exactly are people doing here? What's going on? And at just one point I said, oh, and by the way, if you're interested in knowing who's in what college, they, they self-segregate by, by tables. And she goes, you're kidding. <laughs> and uh, Kathy Zuckweiler, the, the dean of college, graduate study, goes, nope, that's, uh, that's social sciences over there. That's engineering over there. Nursing is at that table. And uh, that table over there is the business office. <laughs> so it's yep. just something that we, we tend to do. We, 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 and it happens here in the library, too. Whenever we have a big get-together, it tends to be... Yep. Um, the students. And <laughs> the students sit at one table. The public yeah. service people sit at another table. And the tech service people sit at a third table, usually, unfortunately. Yeah. It happens. I think it happens in, in, in everywhere. It happens in churches. It happens in, in any kind of public space. Or you just gravitate to people that you know or people that you that you talk to, um, you know, or have similar interests. Um, it was funny because when I was in my college, uh, I was one of... Uh, three black students and we all every time they ask to go in a group <laughs> it's like this instinctual thing okay go meet the other black people <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then they realize oh she's uh she's from the caribbean and then that makes it more interesting but it's it's fun because then i get to we get to talk about our differences 
but we also get to talk about our similarities. A lot of us, you know, and you're in an undergrad program. You, first of all, you're just, you're just trying to make it. You're just trying to survive the course. You're trying to survive your professors. You're trying to survive uh, the assignments. You're just uh, trying to survive uh, everything, bills. Um, just on, You're just trying to survive. We're trying to swim. And so you kind of connect in that way. Um, and then you realize, oh, well, I like to do this. Would you like to hang out? And, you know, that's just kind of, you know, how it's how it starts. Um, I will say, though, that different groups uh, have different experiences because it probably hasn't been so easy for like Indian students or like the Chinese students that we've had here. So I think a big part of even just doing my job was making sure that all of these people felt uh, heard or seen. Um, even with like Chris, the games night uh, you hosted, the one that we had, you know, we had a group of uh, anime gamers and, you know, um, watchers and stuff. And you could tell that they were from different backgrounds and, you know, they connected over this one thing. And it was nice that, you know, we could have hosted that in the library where other people on the outside could see them doing this and then just joining, you know, join the fun. So I think that's what all libraries should be. Oh, yeah, I, I totally agree. Just a, uh, a, a very neutral space where there, there's no like expectation going in. There's no. Um, th there's there's not like people have s very specific needs why they would want to come in here. Like it's just it's just a, a really nice place. It is, and uh, I think a lot of our tutors, uh, the tutors at TASP are also international students. Um, we just have a lot of international students in this building all together, um, and it has been great watching them um, assist each other and then assist other people. Um, and this is one of the places where I feel very much at home. Um, it's not it's not a, a building or a department that seems, oh my God, it's just so many, so many Americans and so many white people. No, you don't get that kind of anxiety. Um, and it's 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 been fun. It's been it's been a, a, a great experience. Um, you know, getting through those language barriers and dealing with even older people, sometimes kids come through. Um, Chris, I'm waiting for you to start bringing your baby <laughs> so we can. Well, I mean, my, so my wife brings her up here to bring me lunch every now and then, and I, I try to <clears throat> I try to make the rounds whenever she's here. But uh, uh, Tossy, do you want me to phone every time the baby shows up? Because the baby's <laughs> yes. here more often than I am. Tell you the truth. Really? <laughs> I haven't seen her like since since she was born. Oh my God! So, yeah, she's a she's no. a huge we chunky baby. We probably need like a, a children's section in here. So we can play with babies and read books and stuff. <laughs> but uh, you know, we have stuff like uh, is the CML section, which is also great. So uh, it's yeah. So I don't know. Do you guys have any questions for me um, at all about? I have no idea. Just international <laughs> stuff. Uh, I I don't know that I have a question, but I I did think of something that I, I wanted to say as you were talking. Um, I think it's our job as, well, I know it's our job as librarians, and I think it should be our job just in general yeah. to be uh, greeters rather than gatekeepers. We should always be, you know, welcome to the party rather than you can't sit with us. Right. Um, and in, in that regard, I was going to go ahead and actually apologize to you, Chris, because I was saying disparaging things about Iron Man 2 after you said that you liked it. <laughs> and the deal is we ought to be able to have like a conversation <laughs> about that, you know, but I shouldn't, you know, belittle what you like just because I don't like it. You Did know, you miss able, the years I where I was saying I have no interest in these dumb like comic book it. movies? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for wanting to reach out because this I'm doing it very uh, begrudgingly. I'm liking this little like kumbaya session I'm creating right now. <laughs> this, this is fun. This is cool. But yeah, um, I think a big part of even I just I want to touch on what was it? I think it slipped me. But if when we look at things like COVID, um, which 
a lot of people just say, oh, well, COVID is gone. Well, I mean, it's still there, but um, we've returned to, we we have a sense of like normalcy now. Um, but during COVID, that's one of the, the places I think uh, where I was just like on a roller coaster because there were like really amazing things happening and then just some really horrible, you know, terrible things. And so like, Part of the international student experience i think a lot of us felt that particularly during covid when you know you have a well i will say thank you for the to the community the wichita falls community for the support that they that they gave us a lot of people you know a lot of uh, local businesses and stuff got together to see how they could donate stuff to us um so that's something i want to point out uh, people uh, really tried their best to help us, wh whether it was financially, um, you know, and, and in just all sorts of ways, the school, um, the global education office, and so really stepped up to see how they could assist international students. But then on the other hand, you had a lot of people who were making it difficult, you know, because um, during that time, the world was was dealing with this thing and we didn't have our families. Uh, we lost our jobs on campus, so we didn't have any um, financial, uh, you know, we didn't have any um, finances coming in. We were homesick. Some people were scared of getting COVID and going to the hospital because we can't afford. We, for the most part, we try to avoid going to the hospital at all costs, like altogether, because we know that we don't have the the necessary insurance or that we can't afford it. You know, there's a lot of uh, inse uh, food insecurity and just all these things happening. We're trying to pay rent and pay our bills, and you have landlords who who couldn't give a crap about our situation you had professors who were saying well you're going through this but you still have to submit the assignment you know we had uh, issues just connecting all together and so i think covid during covid we saw the best of people and also the worst of people um we were trying to stay in the country when the former president put out you know his declaration that international students had to leave uh, you, we saw uh, at other campuses, you know, they were shutting down or st sending international students home. And I'm just thankful that that MSU did not, you know, take that approach with those of us who were here and, you know, really tried to work with us. Because as an international student, for those who don't know, we can only do one online course a semester. You have to do all of your courses in person. And so when COVID happened, you know, there was just this a lot of uh, confusion and challenges and stuff with okay how do i stay in status because you never want to be out of status when you're out of status they kick you out immediately and chances are you can't come back uh, sometimes you have like 15 days you have a grace period of two weeks to figure out how to exit the country and you are already um financially burdened so you can't even buy a ticket and you're trying to think oh my god is ice gonna like come looking for me you know, but on the flip side, you had a lot of people uh, and faculty members who were supportive and, you know, really tried to help us during that experience. So I just wanted to take some time to highlight that. Because I thought, well, well, thank you for that. That's that's uh, again, that's something that we just don't hear that much. And it's it's important that we have that perspective. You don't hear and you don't you don't know. So. Um, it's, 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 yeah, I, 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 I lost my thought there because I was going to say something, but it's like, okay, let me backtrack <laughs> that, but, um, yeah, for the most part, it's, it's been a good experience. Um, we do, as international students, have a lot of financial, um, challenges and learning challenges, um, um, but um, places like this and, you know, MSU kind of really just uh, make it better. I do wish there was, and I, I hate using the word, um, a lot more diversity on campus. I think if I'm being frank, it's, it's one thing to say that we are a diverse campus, 
but if it's not included in our programming and you know in our colleges uh it it it, it really doesn't it doesn't make sense um so i'm happy that the library gets to be like you said chris this neutral place um where people can have you know shared experiences uh, we do have a lot of international students here on campus who contribute to a lot of things, who are involved in in, in many organizations, especially student government. Um, when we have things like homecoming, you have a lot of international students who are part of the like engineering programs and, and stuff like that. And I think sometimes we probably feel like we don't get, you know, the recognition for for those things. You have international students at the top of their classes, like every every commencement. Um, and I don't know. I think sometimes a lot of that uh, gets lost. Um, so I'm always happy when we can take time out to just celebrate international students and also to create spaces where they where they feel at home. Uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we're a little bit over at this point, so we need to think about wrapping up at this point. Um, oh, so <laughs> here I was just about to say the, that was a, a very eloquent point, but yeah, now I can't say that. <laughs> you can still say it. Uh, Okay, so uh, yeah, we are running a little bit over, but uh, we do have our our schedule we must maintain. <laughs> um, yes. So um, uh, campus and community events on the horizon. Joe, you sent me a, a pretty exhaustive list of what's going on just for the summer. Um, we've got summer classes starting soon. Uh, the Wichita Falls Museum of Art at MSU Texas open Tuesday through Saturday. Do you have any more information about that? Um, I don't currently have uh, information on that. I was looking uh, at their website and I know that they do offer uh, guided tours, uh, but they also are just, you know, open and you can just go in and look around. Um, I don't go there as often as I should. Uh, especially considering how close it is because for us i mean it's basically just across the street yeah um but uh yeah i would definitely encourage people to go to 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 that um here basically on campus yeah uh and, the farmer's uh, market has summer hours do you do they have non-summer hours i i, I just thought they were open like one day a week uh, yeah, typically uh, during the rest of the year, they're usually only open on Saturday, but for the summer, they're also going to be open on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. All right. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and that's downtown Wichita Falls. If you'd like to go uh, uh, give some of our local uh, businesses a shot. Um, the next uh, After Hours Art Walk is June 2nd. That's uh, that's every first Thursday of the month. Um I go there with um, my wife pretty often, and we just took our uh, baby there the first time. Uh, we, you have a lot of vendors who set up uh, just a bunch of different types of uh, uh, of products and services. Uh, really fun if you'd like to check that out. Um, then we have the Wichita Falls Brewing Company um, has live trivia every Thursday in June. Um, and what are we looking forward to? Anything entertainment wise that we are uh, kind of looking at right now? Uh, I, I know that I'm going to go see the new Doctor Strange movie sometime soon because uh, I haven't gotten to see it yet. I'm going tonight, so that should be. Are fun. you going tonight? Ooh. Yes. Awesome. Tonight. I think it is a circus uh, thing also still. Going oh, on. I don't know if the circus is still going on right now or not. Um, yeah, I wanted to I, go. Yeah. Just you know. Yeah, um, I know that uh, like the uh, what's currently running at Backdoor Theater, also downtown, is a play called Cover of Life uh, hmm. that I have a friend who's in, and I'm hoping I'll be able to get down <laughs> and see it. But I think it's only got one or two weekends to go. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. Um, Ryan, I have no life. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> not, not right now. Oh my gosh. Um, 
my gosh. Ryan, let's go see a movie. I'm kind of scared to still go out to see movies. I will go see um, Doctor Strange, but I might wait, wait a week or two until the, the crowds get really, really low. I'm still kind of scared to go to enclosed spaces. I know COVID, I mean, the idea is that COVID's supposed to be over with, but it's really not. It's still surging in China and Europe right now. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm a little hesitant to go, but I'll eventually get there. Yeah, absolutely. There's another movie that's uh, pretty good I've heard is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Yeah, people are talking about that movie nonstop, and I think yeah. I, I'm not going to be able to go to theaters for a very long time, but that's one that I really want to see, too, just yeah. just out of the, the general hype that, that I'm seeing around it. Uh, yeah, my, my daughter um, uh, went and saw that, and uh, she gave it six out of five stars. So wow. I should probably go see that at some wow. point. <laughs> okay, probably go. But yeah, I am I'm much like Ryan kind of um Aaron on the side of <clears throat> sorry my voice just went um of caution. Uh, I'm only going cuz I my friends would would just not let me <laughs> would just not let me not go. Um but yeah, absolutely if you need to be vigilant and you know just yeah, if you need to stay in or buy the movie online if that works better for you then do that cuz uh, COVID really isn't over. I think a lot of us would love it to be, uh, but it really isn't. So, uh, yeah, COVID caused me uh, to have really horrible anxiety. So now I'm on Prozac, but um, I also caught COVID the weekend or the day that so somewhere around the time uh, my daughter was born. So um, I'm. I don't know. I've I'm mentally I'm over it, but I know that it's it's still a, a big reality for a lot of people, especially people with like lung disease or or other reasons why why it might honestly still be a, a very concerning illness. So um, if if you have been lucky enough to avoid it for this long, uh, please continue to do so. It's not fun, but otherwise, yeah, I just don't know. For for a lot of people, it is just like, well, I got it. I'm also vaccinated, so whatever. Got you. And I think uh, where I'm, I'm gonna start uh, playing because I know we're talking about like movies and like events and like games, right? Mm -hmm. um, I recently found out about is it Elder Ring? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm on that. I'm not a gamer. I used to game a lot when I was younger, and then I kind of, you know. Most people grow out of that, um, most females. But that's something I am. I've recently become very interested in. That's something my friends um, and my special someone plays, and I can't hear the the end of it. So I I think I'm gonna start playing Elder Ring. So if you uh, are playing it, oh gosh, send your girls some help. Um, if you're not, it's pro it's it seems like a pretty cool game to to get into. Um, so, so I'll expose my, my hypocrisy. Um, I did say it's very hard to play an MMORPG, uh, with a baby. Um, but, uh, I, I might have, uh, when did that game come out? March 29th? Yes. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the newer From Software games. Like, I played Demon Souls when it came out in 2009. I've played all of their games, uh, like, the day they came out. Um, I might have put in, uh, 120 hours into Elden Ring in, like, the first three weeks that it came out. Um, I think it, it averaged out to about, like, a full-time job. Um, <laughs> well, I like the fact that you said to me that you had perfected the, the ability to play it with one hand, because the other hand was holding a baby. Yeah, the, the other hand was holding a baby and feeding the baby, and, and my <laughs> wife said, I am, I am just shocked that you've that you've managed to do all of this uh and multitasking and uh she's gotten a lot bigger since then so i don't i don't know if i maybe could still um but that's your uh, life from from now on you're <laughs> like that's it it's it's you you officially only have one one arm yeah exactly <laughs> the other arm is designated the child until arm until she becomes a, t a teenager, probably, and lets go of that arm, like, no, daddy, I don't want, I don't need you anymore. That's, well, I guess that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, that's, there's a, that's a few years off, but yeah, uh, Elden Ring is superb. Um, I, I loved it. 
the just moment one to until I was done with it, and then I started up uh, another uh, character build. Like as soon as I was done, um, yeah, uh, I, I can give you any kind of tip you want with that game. The, the first one is uh, um, have fun. <laughs> And whenever, <laughs> whenever you die and lose a hundred thousand yeah. runes the first time, um, when you say that's that's like thirty levels I could have used, um, just just move on. <laughs> just say that's okay. I'll 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 get them back. Got you. Thank you for that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I uh, I I love that game. Yeah, but. Okay, so I guess we're over time, but thank you guys so much for having me on just to listen to me rant about, you know, my ex experience uh, here uh, at the library and MSU and in Texas and in America. <laughs> uh, just to kind of sum it up. Yeah, it's uh, I hope that we can continue to have things like, you know, discussions like this in the future, even like not along the same lines, but, you know, um, that really just cater to uh you know all the cultures and people that we have coming coming in here so yeah. thank you guys absolutely and no thank you that's it's been a, a wonderful time yes yeah uh and i do just want to say to uh, any any of our listeners uh that if you have uh, an idea for uh things that you feel like we should talk about or if you are a person who would like to join our podcast for an episode, uh, please message us and let us know, and we will certainly consider it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We are um, we are constantly uh, <laughs> trying to find new things to talk about here. Yeah, and if you also have any ideas of of things that we can do in the library to you know just to help you guys out, let us know too. This is shameless plug. <laughs> absolutely all right and uh yeah i think we're we're pretty well over our time so i think we're going to go ahead and say goodbye thank you all for listening um not sure when this podcast will be up but we'll try to have it uh relatively soon yeah. and thank you for joining us tasia of course my pleasure thank you guys and for having me absolutely and i think that'll do it for us so uh on behalf of Moffat Library, thank you all very much, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Ciao.